Ooh, so yesterday, it was a busy day for the Ravens. Because you know how Ravens usually, stuff will be buzzing around the league and Ravens will be quiet. They'll just be sitting back, sitting back, sitting back. Then all of a sudden, bam, they hit you with that stuff. Uh, biggest news yesterday, um, one, Alejandro Villanueva, he decided to call it quits on his NFL career. Um, and then the Ravens also released one, Tavon Young. Uh, and even though those two had been being talked about as possible cap casualties for the longest, actually seeing it happen, more so with Tavon Young, it was like, wow, they they actually, they really did it. Um, so that made it real. Now, they also had some exclusive rights, uh, free agents that they issued tenders to. And most of them, uh, no, so, no real surprises there. But one was a bit shocking and surprising. And that one that they issued a tender to that shocked me was Tyson Williams. Now, we all know the story with Tyson Williams, um, but I feel like there's some backstory that we just don't know because so much stuff about last year just did not make any sense whatsoever to me. Um, but I felt like after last season that it was best that the Ravens and Tyson Williams, they both went their separate ways and they both look for opportunities elsewhere. Uh, last year, we, as we know, J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, Ravens top three running backs on the roster, all were out. All had season-ending injuries. And you probably do not forget where you were at when you heard about those season-ending injuries. Uh, I remember for Gus Edwards, for his season-ending injury, I was sitting right over there uh, for Justice Hill and his season ending injury. I was actually on a walk. I was taking a walk and I saw my phone and got the news. It was like, oh, wow. And for J.K. Dobbins, I mean, we were all watching that preseason game together. Uh, and then we got the news, I think, the following day. Um, but anyway, that was a big blow to the Ravens. So that left them a little shorthanded at running back. Well, but then it's like, hold up. You know what? Let's sign Le'Veon Bell later on in the season. But let's sign Devontae Freeman, Latavius Murray. It's like, okay. So we, we signed them, and it's like you, you're looking at them, and you're thinking, whoa, these guys, oof, it's, just, it's a little rough right now. We could use an injection of youth. And we had that with Tyson Williams. Tyson Williams provided a burst. He provided explosiveness. Um, he provided the potential to make some game-changing plays. Uh, and he did that in week one. You saw him do his thing against the Raiders, but then in the second half, they just stopped using him. You saw week two, he had some explosive plays against the Chiefs, but then they just stopped using him. And now in both of those games, he did fumble the ball one time each. Uh, the Raiders game, he fumbled the ball out of bounds. The Chiefs game, he fumbled the ball inbounds. But thank goodness for Mr. Devin Duvernay, who ended up catching that fumble or recovering that fumble for a touchdown to save the play. But after that, the Ravens were like, you know what? Nope, we're done with Tyson Williams. Not doing it. Uh, and then where I really felt like the relationship ended uh, was in the Bengals game, the first Bengals game, to where I think it was third down and Lamar was trying to yell out the play. Tyson Williams didn't know what the play was. So they either got to delay a game or they, got a, they had to call a timeout. I forgot which one it was. And then I think the following play, uh, Lamar Jackson, he threw the ball to Tyson Williams. It was a fourth down. Uh, and Tyson Williams ended up running out of bounds way before the first down mark and didn't even try to fight for the, uh, the yards to get the first down. Um, so I felt like that was really the, the end of Tyson Williams with the Baltimore Ravens. There was a game later on in the season where he actually got a carry, and I was cheering. I was like, let's go. Let's keep it going. But the Ravens didn't keep it going. So I'm, I'm just really surprised that they decided to issue a tender to Tyson Williams. Not that I don't think he deserves it, because I'm sure he does, but I just don't feel like the Ravens are going to really give him a shot. And I know some people could be like, oh, well, he's cheap. Oh, he's a body. He's depth. He was all of those things last year, and they didn't use him. Even when they had injuries to their running backs, even when they had these older running backs that just they weren't providing the juice like that anymore. Even when the Ravens were in such a desperate situation in the running game last year, they still chose to look. All right, Devontae Freeman, you up. OK, Latavius Murray, you up. OK, Le'Veon Bell, you up. But Tyson Williams, no. They had plenty of opportunities last year to use him and they had every reason last year to use him. But they didn't. And they chose not to. So that's why I feel like them extending this relationship is just, 
It's weird. It's really weird. And now you got to feel like, all right, J.K. Dobbins is coming back. All right, Gus Edwards is coming back. All right, Justice Hill is possibly coming back. And Ravens, I think they'll end up signing Devontae Freeman later on. Not in that first wave of free agency, but, but later on, I think they'll sign him just for depth. But even without Devontae Freeman, with their top two guys coming back, and them even possibly even drafting or signing an undrafted free agent at running back, whatever they choose to do, I just don't feel like there will be a chance for Tyson Williams. And I feel like his chances last year, they were obviously slim based on the Ravens' usage of him. So now this year with your main guys being back on the squad and healthy, those chances go from slim to even slimmer. So I just, I didn't get that move, but... Hey, it is what it is. We'll see what comes of it. Uh, they also issued some other tenders to some guys who are less surprising. Uh, Senator Tristan Colon Castillo, um, and he's somebody that started a couple games for the Ravens and filled in quite well. I felt like um, if the Ravens lose Bradley, Bo mm, when the Ravens lose Bradley Bozeman, I, I've been saying that I feel like he could be a good option to replace him as center. We'll see how the Ravens feel about that. Um, Tyler Huntley. We already know what time it is. That's Ravens backup QB. Uh, it'd be nice if he can get an opportunity to go somewhere and start. I would love that for him. I, I would love it. Will it happen? Hey, we'll see. Uh, long snapper Nick Moore. Oh, Nick Moore is a story that I, I just never forget. Remember two years ago, they kept this guy around on the practice squad, and I'm thinking, why are they keeping a long snapper on the practice squad? What sense does that make? What are they doing? But then following that year, they ended up cutting Morgan Cox. And it was like, oh, okay, that's what they were doing. So they were keeping him around because they had other plans in place for him. Uh, Geno Stone, who I didn't realize was an exclusive rights-free agent. Um, so they're keeping him around, depth at safety. Then Christian Welch, linebacker, hard hitter, good special teamer. Uh, and he was on the field a lot of, for some uh, regular defense as well. Um, and then, of course, again, Tyson Williams. Now, all of those, all of their deals are going to be a little less than uh, one mil each. Shout out to Sarah Ellison for providing that info. But, yeah, all of their deals are going to be for a little less than one mil each. So, again, it's not going to be a crazy amount of salary cap space invested in any of those guys. And some of these guys are, are starters like Nick Moore. He was a starter at Long Snapper because he's part of the new Wolf Pack with him, Sam Cook, and Justin Tucker. There's been a lot of people thinking that Sam Cook could be on the outs, too. When it comes to Ravens really cutting corners with the salary cap space. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, but so, yeah, none of those guys are shockers. And, and they are some depth guys, some potential starting guys. Um, so we'll see. But I was just, again, very shocked with the whole Tyson Williams thing. But, hey, it is what it is. And we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, it's just, it was very, very head scratching. But anyway, um, I love y'all team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. Maybe by the time you see this, Ravens may be on something else because, you know, usually when they're quiet for so long and then they start, they keep going for a little while. Because remember last time they were quiet and then all of a sudden, huh, the Ravens and Wink, they decided to mutually part ways. And then it was domino after domino after domino after domino after domino. Then they went back to being quiet again. But now this has started. So we'll see what's next. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And we out.